Are we there? You're live. All right. Well, um, hello, guys. I guess my sound's on, so I got to turn this off. We're here back again Wednesday, our usual stream time, 11 a.m. This time we're three minutes early for the folks that were complaining that we were late last time. Uh, today we did it. <laughs> and once again, we're figuring out new setups and new activities for all of this. So today the plan is to build a rig with a limited budget based off BNH's website. So we're going to be roaming through BNH and making decisions based on performance, budget, and what we're trying to achieve with this rig. Um, I'd say it has to be anamorphic in some way. There's some options there. And we also have to set the limit of our budget. How much do we want to spend in this theoretical rig? Um, yeah. What do you think? I'm I'm like I'm torn between five, seven, and ten grand, and the idea is that this is something that you can go from I have zero equipment and you get a full setup. Uh, I see there's 16 people watching, but there's only one like, so all the other 15, please just click that button and uh we'll get going. Uh once again we're here with Blake who's doing all of the behind the scenes stuff. You can see him in the mirror right there. And technical pressing questions. We're, we're gonna do the best that we can. So it's 11 now. Oh, there you are. <laughs> okay guys, so we gotta figure this out. What budget are we going for? Uh, five, seven, or 10? Let me know. I'm, I'm very inclined to go with five, although I think seven would be quite comfortable to work with. Let me know. <laughs> okay. Um, Blake, do you want to switch us for this uh, B&H page? Yeah, sure. We'll do that right Our first question is if we can mod the seven artisan lenses. So I think so. I haven't looked into them uh, since we're on BNH right now. I'm going to start with that seven artisans. And let's see what's the limitation for that. Well, that's a pretty cheap 60 mil. Are they all this cheap? And also, what do they mount to? A bunch of mirrorless mounts. Hmm. Let's see. Micro Four Thirds. So there's a 60, a 7.5, a 25, 35, 12, and let's look into the back of them. Stay there. So this is going to be our point of entry if we want to mod this lens. Um, doesn't look impossible. It looks sturdy enough to survive the modding process. Uh, I just have to get my hands on one. So if anybody's got contacts at Seven Artisans, uh, tell them to get in touch. Oh. Now we're getting a barrage of questions. Yeah, okay, seven. Let's go with 7K for our budget for this project. And we're gonna include in this um, camera lenses. We'll see what kind of support we can get away with, uh, monitor, and what else is good. Mm, Alex, he's from Echo. Mr. Day. So the question is if the Hypergon Hi-Fi 2 is a good lens to begin with for a hundred bucks. For a hundred bucks, it's hard to go 
horribly wrong. So just maybe try it out. But the Hi-Fi 2 is a huge lens. It's so big and so heavy. I wouldn't recommend. But 100 bucks, I mean, what do you got to lose? Uh, give it a shot and see what happens. Do I know if the Vazen lenses can cover Super 35 sensor? Um, from my experiment, the 40 mil was okay. The 40 mil could cover. It was very, very, very tight. And the 28, I couldn't confirm if it was working or not. So I don't have an answer. <laughs> I know the, the upcoming 65 mil will cover Super 35. So if that helps in any way. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> Poland, what time is in Poland now? 10 p.m.? Um, all right, let's get this started. Let's begin with our camera choice. And since we're focused on shooting scope, I would say we want a camera that has good support for anamorphic. That would leave us with, I think, black magic. Wow, not specific at all. Black magic cameras, uh, digital C cameras. We have the 6K and the 4K. Whoa, with the monitoring kit? Back ordered. And a 4K. So this is out of our $7,000, but my other option would be the Panasonic GH5 or the 5S. $600 off. Okay, so we're gonna be sharing uh, b &H links through this process if you decide to get gear as we're going. Um, Zcam, good call. So I'm gonna open a Panasonic tab, some Panasonic tabs here. And we're gonna go to the Z cam. Where is my search bar? Here we are. Z cam E2. That's the oldest one, right? Yeah. Full frame, more than half our budget. This one is kind of eliminated, but the M4 is not looking too bad. So let's try that. And Super 35 6K EF mount, I'm gonna say it's a no-go. I want a mount <clears throat> that's mirrorless that gives us more versatility. So I'm gonna skip that. <clears throat> I'm also going to eliminate the black magic that only has EF mount. So it's the 6K. Goodbye. And um, here we have what else? <laughs> I see my mom is watching this stream. So, hi mom. <laughs> I really got to watch my language now. I think it's going to be the E2, considering our mirrorless mount options. Let's do that. It's going to be the E2 M4, so it's a 4K camera. So we have this. Blackmagic 4K, GH5. I thought this was the GH5S, clearly isn't. Um, and all of these cameras will have some issue in terms of glo uh, rolling shutter. None of them feature global shutters. So to some extent, we're dealing with rolling shutters. That's what you get for having a limited budget. Okay, so now we have way too many options already. Zcam, GH5S, GH5, and the 4K. These bundles, I'm gonna keep them for now. Between the GH5 and the GH5S, I know the 5S has some advantages in terms of um, recording resolutions. It can do 4K, Cinema 4K at 60p, while the GH5 doesn't. 
But I'm going to say that's a, a small gain compared to the $600 that we're going to save in between those two. And I'm going to go with the GH5 between those. Now we're between the Zcam E2 and Pocket 4K and GH5S. Not S, just GH5. Take it easy. Uh, Phantom Body is saying Alexa, large format, RE Master Anamorphic, uh, end of the stream. Yeah, that, if we multiply our budget by uh, 100, maybe we'll be fine. Um, not today. We'll do a day of blowing up the budget and being like, just get the best possible setup. What can we get out of BNH? Um, so between those, the black magic is the cheapest. I feel we're gonna struggle with the money aspect of this show and we're gonna go with cheap. So I'm gonna add this to my cart. Here we go, look at us going. Okay, we already spent $12.95. I'm gonna open a tab with my cart just so I can always see what we're on to. Um, <laughs> it's okay. A hundred times the budget. Easy peasy. Just go to your producer and say, yeah, I don't need the budget of 2,000. I need the budget of 200,000. Just get it. Uh, <laughs> Zcam looks good. Looks cheap. It's not available yet. So it's going to go out. Uh, Zcam is getting a lot of traction these days and it's a, a brand of camera I would like to work more, but at the same time, I can't afford buying a camera just to testing it out. So, bye. I'm really attached to this GH5. I'm just gonna leave it here for a little bit. And we went with the Pocket 4K, just the body. So now we gotta choose between lenses, monitoring and support like rigs batteries power all of those things let's go for lenses first uh how beautiful b and is outside of your europe without the taxes just for that purpose i'm going to add my zip code here or my province so you can add duties and taxes just to make you feel a little better i think it's 12 yeah it should be 12 percent on top of everything but hey at least we got free shipping <laughs> okay so lenses let's look at lenses here mm, start with the keyword anamorphic <laughs> The SLR Magic Anamorphots are, so fingers crossed, we'll get somewhere with that. And lettuce is a bit bigger. Why are you guys like saying no? <laughs> I think we're having a, a little bit of connection issues here. Huh. It's not showing on my side yet. Hopefully, that's a good sign. Oi! Mankind film. You were struggling. You were like, my clamp is like a month late. I'm glad to hear the, the thing arrived in since last week. Good, good stuff. Good update. Um, I have a Blackmagic Pocket 4K with a PL mount adapter. Use a Dokina Cine ATX 11-20. And uh, yes, the 11-20 is a real monster. I had it with a 7D back in 2012 it was great it was amazing and then i moved to full frame and everything was ruined and okay so vasin is always an option and here's a cook anamorphic prime lens case for 500 bucks so i guess that's a no Vazen 40 And the always popular Siri Anamorphic. 
MFT, that's the one. So I would say our anamorphic options are between the Anamorphot 40, which is very cheap, and then we pick a bunch of sphericals to go with it, or we go for the Vazen, which is half of our budget in a single lens. Not sure if that's a great idea, considering we're limited to 7K today. And well, that's the other Vazen. Between those two, considering the crop and the versatility, I would go with the 28 as opposed to the 40. I feel the 28 gives us more freedom of movement. It's a smaller rig, it's more portable. So we're gonna go with that. Um, and the Siri. 700, not bad. It's a single focal length, which I believe is what makes the difference here for choosing the Anamorph font as a priority. Um, quick break to say hi to Lucas because he's also still catching up with the time zones. I guess Europe is a lot later than here. Um, by the way, today is Canada Day. Today is like Canada was born. So it's a national holiday. And here we are because it's just here. And in Vancouver and all across Canada, there are some protests and marches going on um, organized by a group. What's the group called? Let's figure that. Not this, this is a hike. Um, a Cancel Canada Day March is taking place today and it's organized by a group ca called Idle No More and they're in a, a group of ind indigenous-led uh, folks who are defending, rightfully so, that Canada existed before Europeans came over. So I think it's something important that we acknowledge that this country and most countries that have any sort of colony history were built over pre-existing civilizations and people that are still around. In Brazil, it's terrible and in Canada, it's pretty bad too. Same for America, I guess. So even on a national holiday, it's important for us to remember that there were people here before us. As an immigrant, there were lots of people here before me. Uh, something to think about. Every national day is in July. Yep. Okay, so I got lost in that. Anamorphot 40. I'm going to say best call for now. Siri, it's cheap, but it's a single focal length, so we're going to pass on it for the time being. Goodbye. I think we're saving so much money on this. We might have, might be able to afford luxuries later. How's our cart doing? Our cart is doing unreasonably well. Should have gone for the 5k budget. Uh, this goes, this goes. Where's my cart? Vazen's gonna go too. So we have our anamorphic adapter that is compatible with is it compatible though? It is compatible with the Blackmagic uh, Pocket 4K. It's gonna be fine. Uh, you can shoot with the full sensor and not crop into anything. So that gives you some extra pixels and uh, area to work with. Uh, but now we gotta pick some sphericals. And my default answer was gonna be to go with Rokinon or Samyang. Cause they're just, oh, mirrorless. So versatile, but the biggest problem is they're also super fast and have giant fronts, which doesn't work so well. And so we might try something different. Let's see how much is a set of these. Broken on Cine set. I never indulged this much time on B&H. <laughs> um, yes. I'm aware that the Anamorph font is limited to smaller front diameter. So if we pick lenses that have 
a giant front like 77, we have to step that down to 52 and lose considerable amounts of light, if not start vignetting earlier than what we want. Um, so we're not gonna go with these. I just wanted to look at the price. <laughs> Uh, Steven is asking about Isco Ultra Star versus Koa B and H. Well, the Ultra Star costs three hundred and fifty bucks on average, four hundred maybe, and the B and H is going for over a thousand. So, if it's a financial choice, and the project is called On a Budget, go for the Ultra Star any day. Uh, you can watch my reviews in both lenses and decide which characters you like better. Um. So these Rokinons are gonna be a no-go. We also have to take into account the crop factor of the pocket, which is something that I'm not used to. What is, what are good micro four thirds lenses? And go. We're aiming at something that is like in between 25, 20 to 25 mil. So with the crop factor, that's gonna go to up to 50 and it's not gonna give us too much trouble with vignetting and the anamorph font. 20 mil MFT. Let's try something very generic. Mm -hmm. Hyper Primes from SLR Magic. That sounds like a very good solution. Okay, so there's a 20 mil from Panasonic. Um, that's very cheap, fairly cheap. There's rebates, so you can probably extend your warranty for free. Well, 20 mil is not bad. And the fact that this is a pancake is excellent. Uh, so we're gonna probably add that in. And, wow, there goes our budget, Gecko Cam. Never heard of it. It says MFT mount, but this is definitely a PL mount. And it covers 8K Monstro, full frame and larger sensors. This is by far the strangest listing I've seen today. Anything you have to say about it, I'm curious to hear. Well, wow, Panasonic also has a 25 mil that is not a pancake, but it's still cheap. So let's uh, let's look into that. This looks smaller. Is this smaller? No, it's the same. Sigma 16, a zoom. Oh, I am missing all these comments. Let me catch up. Why not the new Zcam E2 M4? Uh, the Zcam is about 200 bucks more expensive and it's still not readily available. So if we wanted to like place this order today, we couldn't have it. So we're building based on this 7K budget and stuff that we can get right now done. Like order and get it shipped. Um, the Pocket 4K, Luke is saying that the Pocket 4K has 10 millimeter sensor height and four by three. But since we're going with a 1.33 lens, um, that doesn't change very much. We're still going to use the full sensor for the time being. Um, slide freeze, Makey. Okay, let's, uh, let's check Makey. And also there's a 17 mil, which I feel would be the very edge of vignetting, but it's something I would like to test out. Um, oh, here's the 11 and 20 that you're talking about, right? Looks neat. Also, also half the budget. <laughs> okay, let's go back up and make it. Sixteen mil. It's a pretty good focal length. It could maybe work. Let's uh let's add this in. A fifty mil definitely gonna work, and a twenty five mil also gonna work. Twelve mil is a bit too wide for what we're going here, so I'm gonna say no. And um, wow, 35, 1.4 for a hundred bucks. How much is this 35? Oh, there is no 35 here. 
Okay, so let's uh, let's add that in too. Well, apparently there's a budget version of Makey, and considering our budget, well, I'm opening way too many links. Uh... <laughs> Good call, Lucas. Um, it's better to remember those things than to let it slide. So these lenses are so cheap. I'm shocked. Less than a hundred bucks for all of these guys. What the hell? Um, if we're building a set and our crop factor is two, 16 will give us what? 32? Could be good. 50 is going to give us 100, so I would say this is our longer side. So we got a 32 and we got a 100. This is a 50, 25 becomes a 50. And then we have the option of choosing these more budget friendly. A quarter of the price. This is for Sony, so buy. But this is for MFT. This is for MFT. Is this the same? No. And this goes here with these guys, our cart. I'm keeping this Panasonic here. Hmm, hard to let go. <laughs> Especially for this much less money. Um, William's asking how many lenses I'm getting. I think a good set can have anywhere between three and five lenses. I would say like a 35, 50, and an 85. Or a hundred, and if you really want a longer end, one thirty-five. I'm gonna say one thirty-five is not gonna work so well for what we're trying to achieve today. So out. The hundred and the eighty-five might be combined into one, which is our fifty mil on MFT that turns into hundred, and then we need something that is between thirty and forty and a fifty. Um, I'm torn. I'm torn between these makes and. The Panasonics. So let's see specs here. Um, 77 mil threads, which is not great, but a very small front element, which is good. This is actually very good. So what we can do here is we get a 77 step down to 52, which is the Anamorph font. And then we pray that there's no ving any, basically. I know we're on a budget, but we're not that tight on money yet. So I'm going to eliminate these budget versions of the Makey. Although they look very interesting for uh, many reasons. I might come back.